Hi there, this is Nick from Marmalade. In this video, we'll build our first Marmalade C++ project. We'll build and test it on the desktop and then deploy it to a Tizen device. We're going to create a simple Hello World project. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a folder for it to go in. Let's call it Hello World. I'm working on a PC here. I'm going to use Visual Studio. As usual, you could use Mac and Xcode if you want. I'll open the folder up and we're going to create a project. So I could actually do this with Project Builder, but what I'm going to do is just do it from scratch to show you how the internals work a little bit. So if we have hello world.mkb. So mkb is the Marmalade project format. It's basically a simple kind of text file that tells your project the files to include options and that kind of things. So all I'm going to do is have one bit of source code. Hello world. And we're going to use a sub-project called IWGX. So in Marmalade to include other bits of source code from other projects, all you have to do is go sub-project, name of the project, IWGX. IWGX is a module that ships with Marmalade and it's basically some 2D, 3D rendering abstraction for doing a sort of games. So if I save that, I'm also going to create the source code. So we'll just have an empty file to start with. And if I right click on the product here, you can see I could build and run straight from here. I could open with different uh, IDs that I have. By default, it's going to open with Visual Studio 2010 Express, I've got installed. Uh, and it's basically built a Visual Studio project and pulled in all the different parts of the Marmalade APIs that it needs. So on the left here, we can see this is our Hello World project. This is the source file and the project file that we just created. Up top, we've got Marmalade System, which is the abstraction layer. So accelerometer, clipboard, compass, keyboard, location, memory, etc. And if you look at any of these, you can see the APIs, it'll do auto-complete and that kind of thing. And at the top here, we can see our IWGX model that we included. The other modules here are all basically dependencies of IWGX, so there's a resource manager, some utility libraries and so on, that IWGX always pulls in for you. So let's create a bit of code. I'm going to include IWGX's main header file. And we have a regular main function. So this is a standard C++ main function. This is the entry point to your app. What we're going to do is do IWGX init. So this initializes our drawing library. And at the end, we want to terminate that. Apps these days basically just get killed by the OS at the end. So you could be lazy and not bother cleaning up, but it's nice to do things properly. Um, return value and then basically what we do here is we're going to clear the screen and just print some text using the GX library so first I'm going to do is set a color to draw with uh, set a clear color even so we're setting the clear color to uh, blue basically and then the third part is the alpha component so it's going to be visible rather than transparent and then we'll just have a while loop in which our app runs. Uh, one interesting function I'm going to use here is this S3 device check quit request. So this is basically a function that checks if the OS has told us to close. So this will basically get triggered if, for example, the user presses a close button on the app or if uh, the OS is running out of memory and decides to kill you. Basically, this makes sure that we quit nicely whenever the OS wants us to. And then we'll clear the screen. Print something. So some X and Y coordinates to print to. And some text. I'm just going to go, hello world. And then it's very much like a sort of GL style API. So we're going to do IWGX flush to push all of the drawing commands to our buffer. IWGX swap buffers to swap our back and front buffers. So our image goes to the screen. And then one final interesting thing is we have S3 device yield. So basically this is a function that 
gives a little bit of time to the OS to make sure that it does everything it needs to. So on some platforms this won't really do very much, but on some this is where callbacks will happen, this is where the OS has time to interrupt your app and do various things. So without calling this fairly regularly, your app could freeze up. I'm going to build this for desktop first, so x86 is the Intel architecture for running in the simulator. And I'll do a debug build, just hit F7 to build. This is where we see if I've typed anything wrong, which I haven't, that's unusual. Hit run and it'll launch our simulator. So the simulator basically lets you simulate different kind of apps and different devices. Just uh, change the resolution here, I think. So one thing you can do is you can change, you can scale up and down to fit it onto small screens. We don't need that at the moment. And as you can see, it's been Tallow World well, nicely, cleared the color to blue. Under configuration, I can do things like set the surface. So if I want to do a different device like this, then I can. Also things like accelerometer, compass, audio, change GL drivers and that kind of thing for testing. For quit this now, we're gonna put it onto a device. So Tizen supports ARM architecture, like most mobile devices, nothing particularly special or interesting. Um, we ship the GCC compiler with the SDK. So I'm gonna do a GCC ARM release build. Pick that there, hit run build it. Then all I have to do is plug in my Tizen device. No specific device setup needed at all. Make sure I unlock the screen. Pick the GCC ARM release build that we've just made. There's lots of configuration options. I could configure different things like demo versions or different asset sets, but I'm going to leave that alone. Pick Tizen as my platform. Lots of options here I can set again. So this is things like the name of the app, versioning. If I go straight to the end and just do package install and run, hit run, and it's going to push that build to the device and open it straight up for us. You can also hit the log here to see what's going on. And on the device you can see it will pop up a little message telling us about permissions, hit OK and the app opens up and there you can see our Hello World. And that's our Marmalade app running on a Tizen device.